those nights we have seen the house of the Lord. The few that are here in, in the uh, brainstorm we're having at the moment, I'm glad you're here and I'm glad for those who have joined us live uh, on the internet and uh, we're so glad you have uh, joined with us tonight. Let me uh, make a couple quick announcements. Of course, remember about Wednesday nights, our small groups are meeting, prayer meeting is meeting in the chapel, choirs meeting in the choir room, and then our children are down in the gym. And uh, so don't miss out on the youth are meeting. We'll be meeting in the chapel again uh, this Wednesday night, one more week with the adults in late. Uh, also, let me mention um, Christy and Andy Gibson. Christy had her baby today. Christy was here this morning in church, and uh, she ended up having to leave out during the service and uh, was not feeling well. And uh, she ended up going on pretty, pretty quick to the hospital and had the baby a little after 2 this afternoon and uh, had a uh, four pound, six ounce boy. His name is Samuel and they're doing good. He's about eight weeks early, uh, but, uh, but they're doing well. And so be in prayer for, uh, for the Gibson family during these days. So uh, uh, but they, are, they are doing fine, and, uh, but they need our prayers because he, is, he needs to gain some weight. So he's a little early, but uh, they're doing well. Again, it's good to see you tonight. I'm gonna ask you to stand, Joel. Going to come and uh, lead us in prayer as we get started with our service. Let's pray. Father, we love you, Lord. It's good to be back in your house tonight. Father, we thank you for the service you had this morning prepared for us. Father, we just thank you for the way it spoke encouragement to our life, Father, but also a sense of urgency. Father, as we leave out this week and we go be the church that you've called us to be. Father, when we come back looking more like Christ next week than we did when we leave tonight, Lord. Father, now we're going to ask you to put your blessings upon this service. We pray for Brother Troy as he breaks the bread. And Father, just feed us, Lord. May he just have a word from you. Father, we just pray that you make him small so you can be big. Father, we just um, we pray for our church during this time. We pray for our community during this time, Lord, that a lot of uncertainty, a lot of fear, but Father, we know that you are sovereign. And Father, we know that you're still sitting at the right hand of the Father. And you have plans for the church, and you have plans for your people. May we be diligent about that. So Father, be with us in the service, Lord. Father, just have your way. Set your spirit down on this place. But Father, most of all, we thank you for Jesus. And it's his name we pray. Amen. Amen. Remain standing. What a mighty God we serve. Let's sing.
majesty, worship his majesty. Unto Jesus be all glory, honor, and praise. He is the only one who is worthy of our praise. Let's sing together. Majesty, worship his majesty. It's this time of the service that we come, we just want to thank you for how you blessed us, uh, more ways than one, especially with our money. And Father, we just ask that you'll be with each and every one of us as we continue to give. We thank you for the blessings of those that continue to give, even though they can't be here, they still give. And Father, we just want to give this back to you, which you've given us and blessed us with, and we'll continue to use it to serve in this church and meet our needs for here, and also to let the gospel get out of this church. And Father, we just thank you so much for your love. Father, do I ask you to bless this and offering as we give. And Father, thank you for your son's holy and precious name that we pray. Amen. <laughs> Death and death and glory. Bethlehem is just the start of the story. Here he comes. Oh, here he comes. Here he comes, teaching in the temple, making timeless wisdom sound simple. Here he comes. Oh. Here he comes, giving sight to a blind man. 
Calling out, giving life to a dead man Here he comes Oh, here he comes Here he comes, from Santa Valley Ring He carries the cross along the way of suffering Here he comes Good evening, church. Glad those of you here are in person tonight. Also, thank you if you're watching live on Facebook or when you will watch, watch it live later, or, or not live later, but watch later this week. We are glad a lot of people are doing that. Um, Latrell, thank you for that song tonight. If you have your Bibles, turn to John chapter 6. John chapter 6. Don't worry, I'm not going to read that whole chapter. You'd have to pack a lunch if I read that whole chapter and breakfast. Uh, a midnight snack and breakfast if I was to read the whole chapter to us tonight. It's only 71 verses. That scares an old boy to death. That would be a read all the verses. But we are going to talk about little things about the Lord. Uh, I, it's amazing, Brother Eric. I know Christy had her baby. I talked through this morning. She told me she wasn't doing well. But uh, they're healthy and doing great. Definitely want to remember them. And while I'm thinking about it, we definitely remember Deborah Butler tomorrow. She has her procedure. That procedure we prayed for uh, a week or so ago. She did not get to have it. But she's having that thing done to her heart tomorrow. We're going to lift her up and others. We had several go through different procedures last week. They're all home. And we want to continue to pray for God and give them recovery. Some were even in church this morning that had surgeries and procedures done. And we serve an awesome Lord. Um, I'm honored to be here tonight. And uh, there's so many things going on. And, and in chapter 6, uh, like I said, it, it is full. A lot of things happening. If you know anything about the Bible which I'm sure most of you here tonight do and, and are watching or listening. John chapter 6, we have the feeding of the 5,000 with the uh, two fish and the five loaves. That's pretty amazing uh, that Jesus did those things. And uh, we know that there was probably more than 5,000 there, but that's part of John chapter 6 is you go through and read that and all of a sudden interrupts the feeding and uh, the crowds are gathering around and Jesus sends the disciples away. He goes up in the mountain to pray and uh, the disciples are on the sea that night and the waves come, the winds tossed in the middle of all of the feeding and the crowd. See, we have to see that Jesus is still God over nature. He walks on the water, calms the seas, and uh, increases the faith of the disciples as uh, that goes. And then the next day we pick up back with the crowd. Jesus is there with the crowd again. And, and uh, they're there again not to uh, worship him as Lord. They're there because they want that free meal again. They think... Uh, 
uh, Long John Silver's is set back up on the plains again, and they're there to get get that free chicken sandwich. And uh, well, I've never been a fan of a chicken sandwich from somewhere, but you know that's just me. But uh, that day they were they were fans, and that's what they were back looking for. And then we know that Jesus takes it a little further, and he starts talking to the crowd, to his disciples that were also there, not only the twelve but others, because we know in previous chapters he had just sent seventy two out that had did major work in the name of Jesus before this, and they're there, and the religious leaders are there, and, and he starts talking to them, says, the only reason you gathered around me is because you want the food I'm offering, but I want to tell you I'm offering you bread of life. And um, they go and they look at him, and, and, and what manner of man is this that says he was there when manner came down from heaven with our fathers in, in the um, wilderness, and uh, was not, is not Mary and Joseph his father? Again, they did not see him as the Son of God, even though many of the disciples there had been with him and witnessed many of his miracles, many of the ones the trail just sang about, and many of the ones they saw. They saw the feeding of the 5,000. They knew that he calmed the winds that night because I'm sure when those 12 got out, they told about that that day. But they, they were more interested in, in the food. And Jesus begins to tell them that he has bread to give them that's called the living bread. And if you'll look in verse 51, we'll pick it up. I am the living bread, which came down from heaven. If any man eat this bread, he shall live forever. And the bread that I will give him is my flesh, when, <clears throat> which I will give for the lives of, of this world. The Jews, therefore, stoned amongst themselves or, or were amazed amongst themselves or, or were confused amongst themselves. They were saying, how can this man give his flesh to eat? Then Jesus said unto them, Verily, verily, I say unto you, except, a, except you eat the flesh of the Son of Man and drink the blood, you have not life in you. Whosoever eateth my flesh and drinketh my blood hath eternal life, and I will raise him up on the last day. For my flesh is meat, it meat indeed, and my blood is drink indeed. He that eateth my flesh and drinketh my blood dwelleth in me, and I am him. And the living Father has sent me, and I live by the Father. So he that eateth me, even he shall live by me. <clears throat> this is the bread which came down from heaven, not as your fathers did eat manna, and are dead, but he that eateth of this bread shall have life forever. These things saith he um, in the synagogue as he taught in Capernaum. And verse 60, many therefore of his disciples, when they heard this, said, this is a hard saying, who can hear it? Pray with me. Father, we pray tonight that you take your word, take and lay my feeble efforts aside. But Lord, I thank you that you not only call me, but you equip me. So Lord, I'm, I'm depending and, and hoping and praying for that equipping that you give tonight, that I can bring your word. And someone needs this, I need it tonight, Lord. I needed this weeks ago when you laid it on my heart. I needed to hear it this morning from Brother Brent. And I needed it this afternoon and I need it tonight. So Lord, we, we pray tonight that you bless the reading of your word. Bless the speaking and preaching of your word. And Lord, may I not say a thing that's not led by the Holy Spirit. So Holy Spirit, I lend, lend, lend myself to you and go under your guidance. Thank you, Lord, for saving us. In Jesus' name. Um, we, that's where we, we pick up the part of this scripture here that many of the disciples felt this was a hard thing. And I preached on this before, and I preached the message that many, many people find that doing the things of Jesus are hard. And, and in today's society, it seems like to me that it's even, even harder than that. So many people are just like in this day. These Jews, these leaders, these disciples needed their hearts saved. That's what needs to happen to people today. People need to get saved. But they were more interested, just like a lot of people today, than Jesus being their servant than not their Savior. Let's repeat that. More people today are interested in Jesus being their servant and not their Savior. They want, them to, want him to meet their needs, serve their needs. I've gotten the last 10 or 15 years, window when I deal with people going through crisis, and, and which I do, and some of them may be listening out, or they may hear later. I tell them, do not make deals with God. How many people, when they're in crisis, Cassie want to make a deal with God? 
They get on their face, God, if you'll get me through this hardship, if you'll get me through what's going on, I'll do this, this, and this. Well, God's not interested in the deal with it that person or I or you may be making with him. He's interested about them living this life. And he wants to give them through eternal life. More people are interested in God serving them through a crisis or Jesus serving them through a crisis than, than them lending themselves to a Savior that controls or owns them or becomes their, their Lord and Savior. More people are interested in that. And, and then we pick that up and we see in these last verses here what Jesus said. Verse 61. Um, when Jesus knew in himself that his disciples murmured at it, he said unto them, do, do this offend you? Oh my goodness, folks. What a time we live in that the things of God offend people. We live in a time that you tell them that Jesus is the only way, the truth, and the life, and you've just offended two-thirds of the world, if not more. And it is truth. It is truth you're telling them. You're not telling them that to judge them or put them down. You're telling them that if you're a born-again Christian and you've been saved by Jesus and you've got this life, you've got this eternal bread, you drink of that living water or that everlasting blood that washed your sins away, you know what it is to be alive. And Jesus, Jesus says, this is offends you. Man, I, I say today to the church, does the things of God offend you? I say to the church today, does the things of God offend you? It is amazing. Some of us were talking last week and the last few weeks. I am getting more questions about the things of God and what it means to be saved from the lost world and hearing more from the lost world. Hear me, church. Hear my heart. My heart is burdened about the church. And I'm not just talking about the physical body of Salem Heights Baptist Church, but I'm talking about the body of Christ. I wholeheartedly agree with the message Brother Brent brought this morning. I wholeheartedly agree with it that we are in the Laodicean age and time. But it burdens my heart that the church seems to be silent today. Can I say that again? It burdens my heart that the church seems to be silent today. I hear more questions. I've got more lost people. I've had people that have quit drinking. They tell me they're trying to straighten their life out. And I'm praying for them. This one old boy I've been work, working with about 12 years told me three weeks ago that I quit drinking and my wife and I are thinking about starting church. Well, I want to just have a fit right there. Because that's answered prayers. And, and, and just it wasn't too awful long back in November that I sat with his wife and, and I could have pushed just a little bit and she'd have got saved. But they're not in church. God didn't leave me to push. But they're going to start church. They got five kids and they want to get them in church. Do you know when the last time that I really had somebody who's in church pour their heart out to me about the things of God and how they miss the things of God? I've had a few. But y'all, I've had sincere people that are lost sincerely seeking God and the things of God more than I sincerely seek the church seeking God. There are some exceptions to that. Some of you this morning blessed my heart. Some of you did this past week blessed my heart. But overall, I'm getting more inquiries from the lost people because I think what is happening is the church has come to this point and Jesus is asking, does this offend you what I've asked you to do? To love the world like I love the world. To love the lost. To love the church like I love the church. He gave himself for the church. It gets better. It's, to me, it just jumps off the page here. And you probably know where we're going. We're going to Peter with this at the end. But before we get there, we got some wonderful stuff we want to see what God's laid on the heart. What if you shall see the Son of Man ascend up where he was before? Latrell's singing that song. And here he comes. And what he's asking them, he said, I'm, I'm asking you, you, you know, what have you seen me ascend back up? You've seen all these miracles. You've heard my teaching. You heard that, that I said I'm the Son of God. If you see the Father, you see me. I and the Father are one. And I'm here living through the Father. He just said that here in, in these verses before. He's telling them how they can have everlasting life. And, and can I just tell you this? I think we as Christians have lost the vision of what it means to have everlasting life through the Lord Jesus Christ. 
One day I'm going to die. One day I'm going to give up this old physical body. These old aches and pains. And I used to I used to laugh at people. I'll just tell you one. I used to laugh at people. Well, I can't drink coffee after 2 o'clock. It keeps me up. Lordly be, he blessed me with that one. I can't drink coffee anymore after 2 o'clock. Or I'm laying there going, 2 o'clock in the morning, I'm still wide awake. And if just things like that, you know, he, God says, be not deceived, whatever you sow, you reap. I sowed doubt on that one on people. And Nene was one there that used to say she couldn't drink that caffeinated coffee after that. But I can tell you, amongst other things. But you know, one day I'm going to give up this old corruptible flesh, and I'm going to put on incorruptible flesh, and I'm going to put on a new body, and I'm going to have eternal life. And, and I want to tell us tonight, the main thing of this message is, will you also go away? But underlining of that is, we have eternal life, and we have the source of eternal life, and it's Jesus. And he's asking all these people out there on the Sea of Galilee, by Capernaum, he's asking them that day, all this stuff I told you, all this stuff you've seen me do, would you believe me more if I was to send right up to heaven? And of course, he knew the answer. We're going to see that. And he goes on to tell him here, here's the... Here's the verse that I really want us to key on. And it's verse 63. It is the spirit that quickened the flesh profits nothing. The words I speak unto you, they are spirit and they are of life. Well, naturally, the Jews all went crazy and all of them said, well, how can we eat his flesh? How can we drink his blood? You know, they're taught in the Leviticus laws and not to eat human flesh. They're taught not to drink any blood whatsoever. Well, naturally, all these Jews, especially these leaders that were out there, were so offended in what Jesus was saying because they misunderstood. Why? And Jesus tells them, he said, because you're listening in the flesh. You're trusting in the flesh. You're not listening in the spirit. So let's turn over and look a little bit at what Paul enlightened us in Romans chapter 8 about um, the flesh and the spirit. Verse 11, Romans 8, 11 says this. But if the spirit of him that raised up Jesus from the dead dwells in you, he that raised up Christ from the dead shall also quicken your mortal bodies by the spirit that dwells in you. You know, there, can, you, can you understand what Jesus is telling us here? It is the spirit of God that quickens us. It is the Spirit of God that gives us eternal life. It is the Spirit of God that brings that change in us. Dwight L. Moody said, you, I love Dwight L. Moody. I, I would love to read more of his stuff. And, and I'm like Brother Derek. I like uh, Little Bradenville. But if you read that book he's got about uh, why revival tarries, you read about two sermons and you're so convicted, you want to hide that book underneath the garbage can and never pick it back up again. And when you pick it back up again, you want to put it back down. I challenge you. You want to read, get a conviction, read, read Little Ravenhill's book, Why Revival Tarries. But Jesus is telling us here, it is the flesh that causes us to doubt. It is the flesh that causes us to, uh, to walk. What, what Dwight L. Moody says, do you remember the day you got saved? How brighter the sun was? How the birds sounded so much sweeter? What a difference it is in our life. And what a difference it is in our life when the Spirit of God moves in. What did, what did Paul tell us here in Romans 8? But the Spirit that raised up Jesus from the dead dwells in you. He that has raised up Christ from the dead shall also quicken your moral bodies by the Spirit that dwells in you. It amazes me how many Christians or church people today that are trusting more in the flesh, facing all the things we are facing, than walking in the Spirit of God. I'm just a little simple guy from Jasper County, Mississippi. I'm not very educated. If you hang around me a little bit, you know that. But I know this. When God moved in my heart, He changed me. And these are some things that ought to be different in your life. When the Spirit of God has moved in your life and you're walking in the Spirit, you've experienced new life. You have that eternal life. You don't have to fear death. So many Christians today uh, that are in church are fearing death. No, I don't want to die today, but I'm not afraid to die today. Honestly, I can say that with full confidence. That I believe totally if my heart stops beating this moment and I pass from this life to the next, that I will be what Paul says, from absent from the body, I'll be present with the Lord, and someday my old fleshly body will be resurrected, I'll get the new body, but between now and then, I'm going to celebrate with Jesus. And I'm going to see him. Why? 
because he gave me eternal life. He gave it to me when I asked. I cannot earn it. I cannot keep it, but he can. Not only did I experience eternal life, but I experienced a relationship with Jesus. See, these people back in John, they had not experienced that. They were there wanting Jesus to serve them instead of understanding that Jesus wanted to save them and do more in their life. The relationship with the Lord. Not only did they experience new life and a new relationship with the Lord, but they experienced a love for God and the things of God. What's happened to the love for the things of God? I realize we're in a pandemic. I realize that. But it looks like to me, and I'm just going to be honest, I'm just, I'm just observing what I see. It looks like it's affecting the church more than anything else. Walmart is full. Lowe's is full. The ball fields are full. The family reunions are full. I'm just being perfectly honest with folks. I'm just being perfectly honest. If you've got a health problem and you're sick and you need to stay in because you've got a problem, please stay in. Praise God that every individual that's a member of this church that has been touched by the virus has gotten through the virus and we've lost nobody to the virus yet. But it's God's sovereign will if we do. It's God's sovereign will that tomorrow I get it and I pass on. But it just seems like to me that the pandemic and the fear that is gripping people today is only gripping them when they come to church. I was not afraid of, of, the, of the church going down a few, uh, a few weeks back. But in just a few weeks, Brother Eric and I were talking the same week. And I, I'm just going to be honest with you folks. I'm speaking from my heart today. I'm speaking from my heart because I'm concerned about the church, not just the physical building here at Salem Heights, but the people that claim to be Christians, that claim to love the things of God, that can't put on a mask, can't do some hand sanitizer, and come to church one and a half hours, one morning a week, but yet can spend hours at the ball tharts, ball fields, <laughs> ball parks, whatever there, whatever to laugh about that. I told you I'm just a simple guy from Jasper County. I can't un I understand that. But yet they can do all the family reunions. They can go all the things, the restaurants. They can do all those things. And I have not a problem with the ballpark. I have not a problem with family reunions. I used to drive to Oklahoma to them all the time. My 97-year-old grandmother. Carol, we used to stop by and see your folks up there in, in Louisiana up that way. So, you know, it, 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 it's the things. But the things about it is, what, what about this, folks? What if you lived in North Korea? What if you lived in China? What if you lived in North Vietnam? Where they hold guns to your head and they kill you if you speak the name of Jesus. That had not happened here. Do I realize we have a virus? Do we have a pandemic? Yes. But it just, just blows my mind how the church is so quiet about the things of God. If you read in Romans, I think you understand that. Let's read more in Romans about flesh. Therefore, brethren, in verse 12, we are debtors not to the flesh, but to live after the flesh, for if we live after the flesh, you shall die. But if you, through the Spirit, do mortify the deeds of the body, you shall live. I just, I'm just afraid that more people are walking in fear of the flesh instead of trusting the presence of God. You say, well, Brother Troy, I just don't want to get my family out. I just don't want to get them here. That's fine, but I want to ask you a question. This new life you have, this love for God you have, what are you doing at home? If your family was asked, what is the most important thing to you, dad, husband, father, in that home, would they say God? I asked myself that question, and a lot of people would probably say Tonka. That probably would be the evidence I give sometimes. Some people would probably say the river. And yes, I love my place on the river. Yes, I love my boat. But I hope deep down someone would stop and think, well, I think it's the Lord. You know, sometimes when do I even walk after the flesh? Like what I used to tell you all the time, I sin three times a year, you know, and, and not like Brother Eric over there when the CD player messed up, but I at least sin, sin three times a year, you know. But you walk after the flesh, and folks, it's easy to walk after the flesh. What does he say here to us? Paul is telling us, Romans, therefore, brothers, we must, we are debtors not to the flesh, but to live after the flesh. He's telling us, hey, you, if you're not careful, you'll follow the flesh. 
You'll let fear and anxiety and all those things come against you. You'll let those things. It's easy to let all that come against you. Again, please hear my heart. If you are sick or you've got something going on, then, then, then stay. But if, if, but if you are out and walking and doing and, and, and God is not present in your home, for instance, if you're at home or you're having, or you're having Bible studies for your kids, are you leaving them? Well, let's keep on reading what Paul said here in Romans. For as many as are led by the Spirit of God, they are the sons of God. For we have received the Spirit of we have not received the Spirit of bondage, again of fear, but we have received the Spirit of adoption, whereby we cry, Abba, Father. We cry, Abba, Father. If you read in John and you read in Galatians and you read here in Romans what God is teaching us about. We're, we, are, we are adopted in the family of God. And not only are we are adopted, y'all, but we are given full sonship, full daughtership. You're not in, adopted into the family of God and not have full inheritance of the family of God. We can rely on the, on the gifts and the treasures and the things that God's given us. We can cry out and receive the wealth that God has given us by becoming his sons and daughters. Now, Joel, when your boys are born, they didn't immediately cry up and say, Father, did they? When they were born, they didn't just, just look up and say, Daddy. They had to learn that. As a Christian, as when we're born again, we give this new life and we receive this spirit and we love the things of God and, and, and we have this relationship with God and we love the things of God. We cry out to God and we can cry immediately to him and say, Abba, Father. We have that. And, and, and see, and a lot of us forget, and if you'll read in Romans here, Paul's talking about the carnal-minded and the spiritual-minded person, but there's so many people have such a lack of knowledge about God because I think they're leaning more to the flesh and their fleshly knowledge of God instead of relying on the Spirit. Whenever we call on God, we get the full wealth of heaven behind us. When we cry out for him for those that are sick, we've got the full healing power of God behind us, and we're asking God if it be his will to touch them. We're asking God if it be his will to save this nation, to, to take this virus away, to save this, um, all this unright, this rioting and all this stuff going on. I don't thank God that I was not born in China today. I'll get back to that. I thank God that, <clears throat> that I was not born in North Korea. But I do thank God for my brothers and sisters that are born there. I thank God for those that have faith to worship under persecution. Those that have faith to worship if their families are going to be killed. In any Muslim country, it's just about that same way that they have that kind of faith. I admire that kind of faith. I mean, I thank God that I'm born in America, but I do not look to America for my salvation. I look to Jesus. But yes, I do not apologize for being a patriot, being a, being a, a conservative Christian, for being someone who loves this nation. Again, I do thank God for my brothers and sisters in those countries that are there that have that new life, that are not leading to the flesh, that are walking by the Spirit. But it longs in my heart, I, I said it this morning, and it longs in my heart to see a revival. Yeah, I, I do long to see that. I, I'm afraid that what Brother Brent preached today is so true that there's such a falling away and turning away that there may not be a revival. Church, do you understand what that means? With a new life, you get a love for lost people. I've got loved ones if God comes today to spend eternity in hell. I don't want my worst enemy to go to hell. We have prayed for, for the revival. Those of us that know God and have experienced this new birth, have experienced the things God told us, and we've received this new life, and we love people like God loves them when we get the Spirit of God because we know what it means to have eternal life in God and not to have eternal life through Jesus Christ. If Christ comes back, millions upon millions will end up in eternity in hell. So it's our job to be led by the Spirit, to show them. It's our job, verse 16 in Romans also, that the Spirit beareth witness with our spirit that we are the children of God. It's our job to walk and let the Spirit quicken those things in our life to bring conviction in our life. 
My words cannot bring conviction if you're listening tonight, but the Holy Spirit can. When you read the Word of God, if you're at home and you cannot come to church and you worship and you read and then you see that God, through the Holy Spirit, brings those convictions in your life. When you gather your family around to pray, it's not just, Lord, thank you for the rain today, which we should thank you for that. Or maybe we need to pray, Lord, we like a little sunshine. Thank you for that. Or thank you, Lord, for the food. We should pray, but we should be praying, Lord, thank you for grace. Thank you for the Holy Spirit. Thank you for your word. How was, how was back in John chapter 6, how were they supposed to get the word? How were they supposed to get this? They were supposed to eat his body through his word. That's how we are to get the living bread today. It's by the word of God. And, it, and it, just, it just scares me how many Christians you meet during the week that never, ever mention Jesus. They never, ever mention Jesus. I think what is happening, more people are living their life through the discernment of the flesh and through the discernment of the spirit. If you're going to make a job change, have you prayed about it? And I'm not talking about God. If I make more money, let me have this job. God, is this where I'm supposed to be? Is this what I'm supposed to be doing? Is this my mission field? Is my family's mission field on this ball team to reach the families that are playing there? Is it going to this family reunion or going to this birthday party or going to this or going to whatever happened at this restaurant? I tell you what, lost people will let you pray for them now. Just try. They'll let you pray for them. Matter of fact, they're, they're very honored to have you to pray for them. You watch quickly how a conversation turns when you in the world and you start saying, God bless you, and you start turning. I, I was on a guided fishing trip the other day, and it didn't take the guy long to realize he had two preachers on the boat. His language cleaned up real quick. Our second day with him was a much... A, both days are very pleasant, but our second day with him was the day that we talked about eternal things. You know why? Because we, we, we were being led by the Spirit. Back in John chapter 6, <clears throat> turn with me there back, it, it, the flesh profits in nothing. The words that I speak unto you, they are, the, they are of the Spirit and they are alive, but there are some of you that don't, that don't, that believe not, for Jesus knew from the beginning, who they were that believed not and who should betray him. Jesus knows our hearts. It's amazing to me how many people that claim to be a Christian, and, and can I just say this again? There's things of God that we all find hard to follow. You know, I'm, I'm like the old thing off the of Lord of the Rings. I, I like some of you some of the time. I have to like some of you the rest of the time. Something like that he said. But you know, I, I'm like that sometimes. Um, I love some of the people some of the time, Ricky, but sometimes it's hard to love everybody. But God says you have to love everybody. When you're walking in the Spirit, you can do that. But when you're walking in the flesh, it's hard to love everyone. It's hard to love the things of God, to be a part of the things of God, to ensure the things of God. I, I want to ask Salem Heights members something. Those of you that are here tonight, those of you may be watching, when is the last time God broke your heart for this lighthouse? That you spent more than five minutes just praying for her, lifting her up. She's a big old ship. She's got a lot of ministries. Matt Kendrick echoed that this morning when he prayed. Thank you, God, for the people that's been sent out from this church that are preaching the gospel all across this nation, all across this world. Young men and women that's been sent out from this church. Satan would like nothing more than to put this light out. You know how he'll succeed in doing that? When we as a church start walking by the flesh and not trusting in the spirit, praying for her, lifting her up. Again, I know we're in the middle of a pandemic, but I just wonder what's really going on with the hearts at home, what's really happening to the people that even on our membership. We had a problem before it ever started, Eric, with people leaving the church. 
We have a problem with people leaving the church because they got disgruntled about things. Well, I'd have to pack ten times a week if I got left every time I got disgruntled about something. Some days Melissa brings cupcakes and some days she don't. I just get disgruntled on the days she does. And I want to pack then. I mean, seriously, it's sometimes the things that people get bent out of church and bent out of shape about are foolish things like cupcakes. I've been there. I saw one of the biggest church fights over the color of a stupid refrigerator in the fellowship hall that I even got the youth up and marched them out that night. That's been about 33 years ago. And you know what happened the next business meeting? It was packed. Because that's going to see what color the refrigerator was going to be. You know what happened, Roger? There's an old godly man who never said much, wore overalls to church every Sunday. He, he ain't raised his hand the whole room. The, they have the whole room washing and sucked out of it. You know what happened? He said, Preacher, what if somebody was a, by, by, by that there refrigerator and donated it? Would it matter what color it was then? And the preacher said, Nobody knew he was going to do that. The old man did it. And he said, And the preacher said, Well, somebody donated it. I think they ought to get to take the color out. Oh, the fight was gone then. You know what happened? The next day, Sears delivered the refrigerator, and it was olive green. Wasn't even the color that nobody wanted. See, it, those are things I've lived. And you know what? I probably had an opinion in that that was probably fleshly. And I shouldn't have. It's so easy to misunderstand what God is telling us to do and leading us to do. Is there, is there consequences? I heard this from a lost man this week. And, and this lost man, I, I hope to see him saved. I'm working hard on him. He, he's had a heart attack. He had a heart cath. And he told me, he said, I never wanted a preacher to do my funeral for his heart cath. Two weeks ago, he called me. And he said, Preacher, if I don't make it, I want you to do my funeral. And I asked him, I said, well, I got to know one thing. He said, I know what you're going to ask me. You know the answer to that. But we're still working on that. We're still working. I talked to him Friday morning. We're still working on that. But you know what he said about decisions? And this is really, this is, this is a wisdom if you think about it. Decisions are easy to make. It's living with the consequences after you make them. There's a lot of wisdom in that. A lot of people want to make this easy believism in Jesus. And trust me, it is easy. It's just believing who he says he is and accepting that he wants to give you everlasting life and believing in it and trusting in him. But yet they want to come and, and, and make that decision with all these reservations of things that they still want to do with their life. When we cry, Abba, Father, we are adopted. Go back to Romans chapter 8. I want you to read this verse with me. Verse 8. So then they that are in the flesh cannot please God. You read that verse about being the salt and the light. And it says that when we are the salt, we can bring glory to God. Joel, that blows my mind to this day. That this little simple person from Jasper County can bring Robbie pleasing to God. Glorifying to God. And this told me in Romans 8 that if, if I walk after the flesh, I can't please God. And, and that's what he's going through here. Jesus is telling them here that, that you know, the spirit is what's quenching and and, and, and again, I believe that most people today are reacting in the spirit, I mean in the flesh and not in the spirit. And here's what it leads to, and we're going to be ready to close in just a minute. For Jesus knew from the beginning that they believed not, and who should betray him? And he said, therefore, I say to you that no man can come unto me except he were given unto me by the Father. What a love. God first loved us before we loved him. That's a whole other message. Verse 66. From that time, many of his disciples went back and walked no more with him. It didn't say from that time many of the scribes and Pharisees went back. Many of the crowd went back. It said many of his disciples. These were people that had been under his teachings. These were people that were right there that called him rabbi that went back and they followed him no more. 
as Brother Brent said today in that in his message, will you be one of the ones that fall away? Will you be one of the ones? I thought last week he was going to preach my message. A week before last, he was going to preach my message that, that I was going to preach. And, and with that, because I was going to preach, what God had laid on my heart first is uh, what profit is man to gain the whole world and lose his soul? We've got a lot of people wanting to gain the whole world and they're going to lose their soul. I mean, we really do. And they're on memberships and they want a preacher to preach them into heaven when they die because they know they're not saved. Now, I'm, I'm meddling, I'm meddling, I'm moving on. Then Jesus said unto them, unto the twelve, will you also go away? So my question tonight is you, will you also go away? Those of us here, those of you that are listening, those of you that are watching, will you also go away? Remember, in the scriptures before this, there's some things that are going to be hard to do. There's some things and times coming in this country unless God moves in a mighty way it's going to be hard for men like me to stand in the pulpit and preach. Men like Brent Vincent to stand and preach. Men and women like you to proclaim your faith in public and at work. Look at all the craziness out there now. In these graves, they're going to change the thing. You can't get a master's degree in teaching anymore. You're going to have to get a degree of superiority. Isn't that crazy? They're changing all. They, they, even the Master Lock Company, Wendell, is going to change their name from Master Lock to Unbreakable Lock. I don't know what they're going to call it. But anyway, they're talking about changing their name. And you tell me that if you don't see the handwriting on the wall, that the things of God that are going to be hard for us to stand for, that are going to cost us something, aren't coming. These end times we're in, it's going to cost us something. We've been blessed to be in America. We've been blessed to have the freedom. But you got a lot of people that don't understand that. Jesus asked, will you go away? And then here's old Simon Peter. I like him. He put his foot in his mouth many times. I did. I did it earlier tonight. And, uh, but it, it's okay. Peter said, listen to what he said. Listen to what he said. Then Simon Peter answered, verse 68, Lord, to whom shall we go? Thou hast the words for eternal life. Thou hast the words for eternal life. I'm glad that my eternal life is not built on my thinking or my philosophy, but it's built on Jesus. Listen to what else he says. And we believe and are sure that thou art the Christ, the Son of the living God. I pray you never go away from him. I pray we never go away from him. I pray we will be a church that, that never falters from teaching the love of God, the gift of salvation through Jesus Christ, and that once you're saved, you're different. You're sealed by the Holy Spirit. You're no longer condemned by the flesh. But you walk by the Spirit. Peter said, we are sure that you are the Son of God. Do you know that tonight? Whether you're listening at home or whether you're here tonight, do you know that you have Jesus and He are you sure that He's your Savior and you have eternal life? If you don't, you will go away. The flesh, the world, Satan will pull you. He'll pull you like you've never been pulled before. Many a church member will go away. But those who have eternal life and are sure, I pray that you will never go away. Let's pray. Lord, it is with a very heavy heart that I come before your throne of mercy and grace tonight and I plead for your church. Lord, I know that there's people that are sick and have reasons not to come and medical reasons and even fears that go on go beyond what I know. Lord, I can't do anything about those things, so I lift them up to you for their physical health, for their fears, their misunderstandings or whatever it may be, Lord. I know those are real. 
I was going to preach on worry and anxiety tonight, but you changed my mind and you changed my heart. Those things are real. You wouldn't have them in your word. You wouldn't have them there, Lord, if we didn't have real fears and real anxiety, real sickness. So, Lord, I pray for those, Lord, that, that are going through that. And, and, and it is scary. It is scary times for us with the virus. It's scary time for us in our nation with all the unrest. And, Lord, it just seems like it's so much craziness. But I thank you as, as we, as Brother Brent said this morning, we have our hope in our salvation in you, and you are our anchor in these times of craziness, these times of uncertainties, these times of fears, these times of this sickness and this pandemic. But, Lord, it also concerns my heart that it seems like so many people that belong to your church maybe even in name, or maybe even they're falling away, as Brother Brent preached this morning, how they never talk about you. They never mention you. They can talk about, well, we have no baseball games this year. They can talk about, wonder if we don't have an NFL season. They can't say what you told them yesterday or what they see from you today or how you strengthen them I think of the testimony of one Christian man just recently, Lord, told me about when he switched his job, how all of his friends and family thought it was crazy. Even took a pay and cut, a cut in pay. And yet, Lord, that business is gone now. But you took care of that man, and through him, you're taking care of a lot of his friends as he's got a job. Lord, thank you for faith. Lord, I guess tonight, Lord, I'm praying for my church and for the church in whole as you just increase our faith. Let us not walk by flesh. Let us not walk by sight. But let us walk by faith. Let us trust you. Lord, tomorrow or even this evening or tonight, I may get a devastating phone call. But I pray my faith is not in that phone call for me handling it, but in letting you handle it through me. I pray, Lord, that we can learn to walk by the Spirit and not by the flesh. Lord, I pray that when Satan wants to bring things in our life that are causing misunderstandings or, or we just don't understand it, that you'll reveal it through the Spirit. I pray, Lord, as we cry out, Abba, Father, as we cry out to you that we realize we have all the riches of heaven behind us. We have your wisdom, your knowledge, your peace, your hope, your strength. Or too many people today are relying on the numbers from yesterday. What will the numbers be tomorrow? Those are all important things. But Lord, when we look through them through the eyes of faith, we can make through the numbers whether it's extremely high or extremely low because you are our anchor. You are our hope. Lord, those that don't know you and they know they're lost, Lord, probably even tonight there may be someone in here and they knew that before they sat down or someone watching this video this week. We thank you for the technology. Thank you for the ones that make it happen every week. Lord, we thank you that the gospel is going in countries that that we've never had the opportunity to preach in before. That's you, Holy Spirit, touching hearts and touching lives. We pray, Lord, if someone gets saved on the Internet, through Facebook or watching, they'll let us know. They'll just let us know so we can rejoice with them. Lord, bless our church. Keep our doors open. Keep your lighthouse going. We love you, Lord. With a heavy heart, we love you. In Jesus' name, amen. It's a little different tonight. Wherever you're sitting and at your chair, I ask you to join me tonight in praying for our church, praying for our nation, lifting her up. I'm firmly convinced that anything that's going to change our church, our situation, our nation, it's going to come when God's people humbly, humbly, Call out on the name of God.
As Brother Eric leads us, you pray. Let's stand together. Turn your eyes upon Jesus. Oh, soul, are you weary and troubled? No light in the darkness you see. There's light for a look at the Savior, and life for a content and free. church that prays for our people. We want to lift her up. And Christy and the new baby that the babe, uh, what was his name again? Samuel. That Samuel has no problems, no complications. Um, and that she doesn't. It sounds good. And as we continue to pray and, and continue to pray for our nation, join me in prayer. Father, we pray, Lord, for our church. We pray, Lord, you, you just bless and move. We pray for these people that are on our hearts and our church members. We thank you for touching Roger. He's back with us. We as you continue to be with Bruiser Lord and others, we pray for Christy and Samuel. We thank for this new life and this new baby that you touched. We look forward to the day, Lord, that, that Stephen and Christy can bring him and bring him to church and dedicate him to be raised under, under the watch care of the church and the day that Samuel accepts you as Lord and Savior and baptized. Lord, we thank you for that. And, and Lord, it, it, it's not just something we pray, but it's something we believe in. Father, we ask you to touch Deborah in a mighty way. We thank you for keeping her safe. Lord, she's gone through so much, so we ask you to touch her. And Lord, I'm sure there's others tonight. I, I don't know their names or their needs, but you do. And I pray, Lord, that, that they turn to you and that we are faithful to lift them up as brothers and sisters in Christ. We love you, Lord. Thank you for meeting with us tonight in Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you for coming tonight, everybody.